And no matter what I did, I would still find myself the night before trying to cram it in and it just was not working. And similar to all the other years that I've been in school where I do really, really well in the beginning. I have my planner, I'm all organized, my divider. And then halfway through, my, my dividers mean nothing anymore because I have something for every subject and every all through my binder. It was so much stress. And then in the meantime, you know, I have to feed my kid and keep him alive. But then I had all this stuff to do and I would just be doing nothing. I would, I would take a nap or was on Facebook for a ridiculous amount of time. And the way I practiced was I would go in, I'd go, okay, I got to practice. I should make dinner. I start water boiling and I remember I had to do something. I see mail I have to do. And then the water's boiling over and I go, oh my gosh, I'm still practicing. And that was how I practiced. ADHD Rewired, episode number 49. This is the show designed to help those of us who have really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. My name is Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker coach and consultant. We know that starting can be the hardest part, so let's get started. But first, let me thank our sponsor. This podcast is brought to you by audible.com. For a free audiobook download, go to audibletrial.com slash ADHD rewired for a free audiobook download. Need help making your choice? Stay tuned for the middle of the episode when I'm going to give you a bunch of choices by one of our listeners. Hello and welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. This is episode 49. Next week is episode 50. That feels like a huge milestone and I'm so excited that next week for episode 50, the goal is we're going to have a little party and it's going to be an online party using a platform called Zoom where me and 24, hopefully up to 24 of you are going to be able to join me for about an hour and we're going to have a conversation and we're going to kind of see how that goes. So that is hopefully going to be what you're going to hear next week. I'm just so excited. And we talk about the success of doing something consistently, 50 episodes of a podcast without taking a break. When you have ADHD, that just feels like a great uh, victory. And I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of that. So I want to update you on my progress this week because my last two weeks have, uh, well, two weeks ago, uh, you heard me talk about on the episode 55, ADHD at 55 miles per hour when I did a podcast episode in my car on the way to a presentation. Uh, I was not at my best and I shared my um, my fears, some of my negative thoughts that I was having. I was just very open and authentic and the positive responses to that that. Uh, episode continue to come in. So thank you for everyone who has uh, emailed me um, with that or contacted me on Twitter, on Facebook. It's been just really, uh, the support has been awesome. Um, Then last week I shared with you guys what um, some of the steps that I was making to get back on track. And this week I feel like I'm almost all the way back. And uh, so some of the specific updates about how I'm doing in that area. So when I recorded last week's episode, I believe that I said that I wanted to get back and I was ready to get back to exercising. Since I recorded that, I've exercised four times for about 20 minutes each. So you know, I'm a big believer when you are beginning a workout routine, getting back into it, just start slow and grow. It's the best way to make fast and big gains. I've been getting on the scale and I've lost four pounds. As of this morning, I was 218. So feeling good about that. I am, uh, my goal is 200. So uh, I'm gonna keep updating you on that. I went back to an old strategy that I used to use a, uh, a lot. And that was to use an alarm clock in my room at night. What I do, that I set it before I left my uh, left for work today. And I um, set it for 10.30 p.m. The reason I do that is I need to be in my room in order to go to bed. 
So it's easy to ignore the alarms, all that stuff. If my alarm goes off and I'm not there to turn it off or there before it goes off, which is the goal, I could potentially wake my wife and my son and then I could be in the doghouse. So this has been a strategy that has worked for me in the past and I'm bringing back dusting off an old strategy. You know, sometimes those old strategies when you, when you haven't used them for a while are new and shiny again. And this one I'm bringing back because I know how important my sleep is. And this is, you know, as if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that sleep is my uphill battle. Um, so I'm bringing back an old strategy. Um, another success I want to share is that today, I mean, let me ask you a question before I share this. Have you ever had like an email that you've been or someone you wanted to contact and you've thought about it for years? Well, I had one of those and I sent that email today. So I felt really good about that. Um, some other uh, kind of successes that I'm feeling good about. The uh, In this most recent edition, the Spring 2015 of Attitude Magazine, that's A-D-D-I-T-U-D-E Magazine, the feature article, 47 Must Have Apps, I authored the part that says tap into apps. It is the feature article. And I reviewed and talked about, I have to look at my own article that I wrote. Um, I think it was set, no, 30. Yep. (laughs) 30 apps. Um, And I'll give you what's on the first page. But you got to go check them out and got to go read it. Uh, Rescue Time, Focus at Will, Freedom, Antisocial, Evernote, Mint, Mailbox, Google Voice, and Boomerang for Gmail email. So if you want to find out the rest of what I uh, wrote about, go check out this, uh, the newest edition of Attitude Magazine uh, with the feature article by me. Um, and it's actually, there's, there's, it's like a two-parter, two-parter, two-part article. The other author is someone who, that's going to be another one of someone I am intending on reaching out to. And that's Beth. Now I'm going to botch your name, Beth. Uh, Guadagini, 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 Guadagini. Sorry, Beth, if I completely botched your name, but she, her apps, she has a bunch of apps where she talks about time tools. Um, so I think that's what she writes about. I really was prepared and that, yeah, time tools. I was right. All right. And she has, it looks like, uh, 17 different time tools that she talks about, including a number of ones that I never heard of. So go check that out. Um, let's see other Key information before we get into today's interview. Um, so the the uh, coaching group is is officially in its first week. We had today we had a, a our first mastermind session, which was I thought was awesome. I thought it was really powerful. A lot of great information was was given. Um, also this week we had our first adult study hall, and that was also awesome. Um, I got stuff done that I've been putting off, and I think everyone in the group did as well. So. This kind of made me think, and I want to know if this is something that you would be interested in. You know, coordinating a huge, uh, uh, a big coaching group with all these components to it is a big, a big undertaking Um, from a planning perspective. It's also difficult for lots of people to do this, both uh, financially, um, because it's the the frequency of it and the the length of it, and just the, the time commitment to it. But I was thinking... There's not really that much planning involved in what, because basically what we did is we all met on a, on a Zoom video conference and we muted our microphones. We first actually shared really quickly what we were planning on doing. We all muted our mics and then we got stuff done for 45 minutes. Is this something that you would be interested in doing in some fashion, whether it's weekly, um, you know, maybe a couple times a week, where there are scheduled times where you can just hop in and do work with other people virtually? Um, I'm interested in knowing you're interested if you're interested in this because this is something that you know I was kind of thinking through this and it doesn't seem like there would be that much planning involved in this. It's basically share what you want to do, show up, mute your mic, and do it while we quietly uh, and I just kind of check in on on to see if everyone's doing what they are doing. So if you think that would be helpful to you, let me know. Just shoot me an email. 
um, go to my website. You can email me at eric at erictibbers.com uh, or at my website, erictibbers.com. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Let me know, uh, you know how long you would like those sessions to be because I think this might be the next thing that I'm going to launch um, because it's really helpful. I and mean, it was extraordinarily helpful. I um, What I did during that time was uh, I created labels for uh, three different new clients. I faxed the information that I needed to my biller. Um, and I had to uh, look some information up to confirm a diagnosis. So that's that's what I did. And that was stuff that was sitting in my inbox. And so I put a dent of a, probably about two inches in my inbox and that felt really good. Um, other things, so I'll make a deal with you guys. My intro is really long. I'm gonna give you a super fast outro. How's that sound? There is a, um, let's see. So last week I talked about a, um, a Kickstarter campaign by my friend and fellow podcaster and fellow ADHD here, Kim Trombo, who is writing the book um, about a generous giraffe. It's a children's book. It's really cute. It's really nice. And um, so I rallied, the, I rallied the troops in the uh, ADHD rewired community. And guess what? she made her goal so that's awesome and she did this raffle for uh who would w uh, win this giraffe and um i won so i thought that was kind of crazy uh and kind of cool i was wondering if people would think it was rigged it certainly was not rigged um, but i'm just really happy that my uh, my monkey's gonna have a friend now so kim congratulations i can't wait to see it when it's all done um one other thing how many times will I say one other thing? Probably three. Um, there is a new podcast out that I would like you to really check out. It's it's an ADHD podcast. And there's one thing that I'll guarantee you about listening to this podcast. You won't learn a thing, but you're going to be thoroughly entertained. Uh, the podcast is the Tom Nardone Show. Uh, Tom was a guest on an episode a while back. I don't remember what number, but it was about sleeping in separate bedrooms. Um, so him and his wife um, are doing this podcast together. It's it's just awesome. You feel like you shouldn't be in the room listening to this conversation. Um, it's, so it's great. It's it's it's. I'm thoroughly entertained by it. I really really like it. Um, but there is no educational value to it. So uh, don't listen it with your kids around. So Tom, congratulations on your launch. And um, that's all I got. The ten minute intro. Welcome to ADHD Rewired. Now, <laughs> to our episode. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. I am here with my guest in the virtual studio with Precious Mackie, who is in her late 20s. After she told me she was 25 a few times, I figured we'll let it go at that. She's a mom, a uh, returning student. She's uh, back, back at college. Um, I, I wrote something else down that I can't read. Uh, she's originally from Florida. I figured it out. It, it's that you live in Virginia. I'm like, that's not what I think it says. Um, and I'm thrilled to have her on. She's been a very active member of the ADHD Rewired Facebook community. And uh, you joined us for our Zoom party that we had uh, uh, last yes. week, which was a riot. It was a lot of fun. So um, Precious, thank you for coming on. I know you didn't do your homework, um, so we're gonna kind of wing it here. Um, welcome and uh, welcome for coming on. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing well. It's, it's Friday. Well, it is Friday. Yeah. You had a look on your face. Now I do see the video feed. She had a look on her face of after she said it was Friday. And she's like, wait, is it Friday? Was it, <laughs> did I read that correctly? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, we made it through the week. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's totally okay because yesterday I recorded a solo episode um, for the podcast that will be released. Uh, well, when you hear this, it was last week's episode. And I'm very aware that... I, in the intro to the episode, I said that next week's going to be episode 50. And then I realized like an hour later, I'm like, no, it's not. So um, I think this one might be, or maybe the next one. We're getting really close <laughs> to the 50. So yes. um, who, who's counting anyways, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you. So um, you said you're a mom. Uh, how many kids yeah. do you have? I have one. You have one kid. How old? Yes. 
He's nine. Nine year old. Yeah. Okay. And um, do you want to tell us about about him? Um. Well, yeah. I mean, he's he's my little guy. He's uh, saved me and helped get me focused on give me purpose in a way. I don't have much of a family. Okay. And um, and he just was such a blessing. He came mm. my world, and um, I'm just really thankful for that. And um, so that was I was starting school when he was uh, newborn, college second second year, mm -hmm. and um, it because of the lack of family and whatnot, it wasn't the wisest decision to go back full time with a newborn, and so I. I ended up withdrawing and then and what were you studying I was getting my prereqs to go into dental hygiene mm -hmm. and that was was a job you know it was a, a solid income and it was smart on paper and so you went into it for the the income it was, it was the potential well, yeah, good revenue. potentially and I mean I enjoy people I had it was just made sense, okay. kind of like the science side of things. And so then I, I withdrew from school, was not sure if it was planned to go back. Um, his, I was married, and um, it wasn't the healthiest relationship. Okay. Uh, and, and, you, and your son, you had him when you were young. So you must, yes. be, how, how, was, how old were you when you got married? Uh, we were, were, I was 19. So you were, you were a baby. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It was, yes. <laughs> I mean, you can see the final picture afterwards, you know, the journey that where it makes sense. But I, I don't know if I would recommend it to anyone. <laughs> and, um, and so, so that ended. Um, eventually, I went from the pot to the frying pan into another interesting relationship. Okay. So, so you went <laughs> to school. So you were in school for dental hygiene. How old? Um, 19. Okay. So right 19. after you had your, had yeah. your son. Mm -hmm. okay. At him and I was in school and, um, man, that must've so been hard. Yes. It wasn't, it wasn't easy, but the, I didn't always have that drive. I never had a drive like everyone else. You know, I would get jealous where people could just, just do it because they wanted to. And, um, so, so, and that was a touch of it growing up. I was a really good student, but I would always do the, the minimum amount of work mm -hmm. to do the best I could. Yeah. So I, I could get A's easy or high B's without studying. And so I wouldn't study. And is that if how it I was studied. for you? Is that how it was for you? Like all the way through schooling? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh yeah. So in, yeah. in a lot of, in a lot of clients that I work with precious that, um, you know, those are the clients that have the hardest time when they get into the upper grades and into college because they never had to really study and now all of a sudden they do and they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And and I, I did get a touch of that when I was, was starting in that, those first couple of years, but I was still able to get, I got my first, um, well, second B and it was, it was, it was hard. I had a lot of pressure in high school from growing up where my I grew up with my aunt and uncle, and if I got an A minus, I would have a sit down, and they say you need to look at this because it's going to turn into a B, and that's unacceptable. So do you I think always that, had was this, there a lot of issues with perfection. Then do you think as a result of that? Yes, it was. I was never enough, mm. even, and um, so I I realized later as I had grown up that all those voices. I still put that pressure on myself. And so I was, I would just be beside myself with a B, even though I knew how to get an A, you mm -hmm. just look at it and read. But you know, it was, I think one was economics. Yeah, you economics. mentioned those, those voices and I, um, the, 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 the negative thoughts that kind of go into in that kind of um, sometimes scream at us inside of our right. minds. And, um, you know, it's the one thing that I would say to that because, uh, you know, I, 
those voices were stirred up for me in the last couple of weeks recently with uh this i was i was pushing myself really hard with uh, the launch of uh, my last coaching group that just started and um you know i was there's definitely that that um i have to really monitor and be very cognizant of that that those perfectionistic qualities for me part of it is because i went through most of my life not being successful and then once you kind of taste that success it feels really good it's like a drug you want more of it and but i didn't i didn't really listen to those limitations and i was really surprised i was really trying to be mindful of noticing those those uh those kind of negative thoughts those voices that were saying you know it's like what are they going to think if you know if you don't do it you know this way or that way? What do you think? What are they going to think if you you kept saying you were going to you know their group was going to fill up and what if it doesn't? You know, <laughs> no one's going to like you anymore. And it's like those are interesting yeah. thoughts. And it's like and it's hard. It's you know it's like I teach the stuff and when you're stressed and you're overwhelmed, mm. it's amazing how much those those kinds of thoughts can feel like like they're facts and they're not exactly. you know and you have to really talk back to those thoughts and right. so i had to be really intentional this past week or so on on doing that so it's like i can definitely relate with with those negative thoughts um and yeah. i think that a lot of you know people listening right now can say oh yeah those voices just shut up already <laughs> right and and you do you need to to be able to take that step back and and know that it it isn't true. You know, you're not going to lose friends. And, and it doesn't, because I, I did poorly on a test or, or anything doesn't transcribe into my worth. I mean, I, you know, right, because I, I think right. so much less of myself and, and I've gotten better with it now lately as I've, I've come back to school. Um, my friend told me, I, I would have had a B and I was on a test. And hey, bees are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, um, rem- remember, what do they call the doctor who graduated last of his class? Yep. I was like, what? He said, they still call him doctor. That's right. Yep. <laughs> and, and so it's, you know, that perspective of being able to just, you know, I, I, I did what I could. I had all these other things going on. So I, I couldn't put the... Mm-hmm. Nine hours you know, we have to do these kind of this, this cost benefit analysis of okay so if it is like if you're going to almost into a state of crisis because you are so stressed to get those a's it's right. not worth it you know it's yeah. like you can get you know, if you're a high school student you can get into college without getting all a's i mean i got into college my grades were not good okay? <laughs> I, I, I was very involved with other things and i did have an upward trend towards the end which which uh-huh. helped okay. um you know, but it's, it's, I, I tell a lot of parents that I talk to um, who are, you know, so worried that if their kids aren't getting all A's and B's that they're not going to go anywhere with their life. I'm like, yeah. are you kidding? Like, I know. you know, it's like, and so those fears are so real. And it's like, you know, even in college, those good grades, that means it's nice to get good grades. And what that really ultimately helps you for is your first job. After that, right. it doesn't really matter. Right. And, and, um, that's so true. And then as it goes on, they don't even ask you about GPA. They go, oh, okay, you went there. All right. But if you have ADHD and I ask you about how your grades were like, I don't remember. It was so right? long ago. It was last year. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, so I I had that pressure this first few years. Mm-hmm. And then um had the little boy and, and I went, I started working as a waitress. And um, it, it was, it was good. I worked at a corporate restaurant, so they had all these, how it should be. I'm not type A necessarily, but in certain zones, you know, it needs to be two inches from that corner, you know, it's yeah. just, and I, and I thrived in it and it was fast paced and everything was busy every single, or, or different every day. And that was something that I was always important to me because I, I get bored easily. And did you ever walk away from taking an order and then like forget that you didn't write something down and then like forget um, what they just no, told you? I, I got into really good habits initially off the bat. I wrote everything down. You couldn't read it. And at one restaurant, I would get in trouble because just in case they needed to to read the ticket, the kitchen wouldn't be able to read mine. But I mean, I had my system and and after the years went by, I became really efficient. Um Initially, when I first started going out, out of the out of the gate, it was I was so scared, and I'm I'm really shy by nature. 
I, I always have been. I'm, I grew up, grew up with my father till I was eight. Really? And, and he told me, he said, I mean, he would tell people, yeah, she's shy. So I don't know if I was shy because I was described as that, you know, that mm. whole labeling cycle. And, um, but once I got to know you, then it was just, I mean, everything was off. And, but being a waitress, it would get so nervous. And then some, some restaurants, you have to say this whole spiel before you can even talk to them. And, but as a waitress, I wasn't necessarily precious anymore. I was your waitress. So I would take this, I always enjoyed theater and acting and everything. So when I would put on for in this, I would take on this character where I could definitely do that because I know what's expected of me. I know how to do it. And I had that confidence. And that helped me tremendously um, with that unhealthy relationship with the husband because because I had such poor confidence all my life. And talk, talk to me a little bit about this idea of, of playing this character. Cause I think there's a lot mm -hmm. of value we can actually gain from that. in in many areas of our life, can you talk to that a little bit? Yes. Um, I think it was, it was just a, a mindset, almost a, a protective and safe mindset because if it was me, I mean, I, at that time I didn't even like me. So well, what are they going to respond to it as? But when I was your waitress for the night, I could, yeah, I know what the specials are. I can tell you that. And I can bring your drinks to you and and do these 50 other things at the same time because I'm aware and thinking of it all at the same time. And and I was I was good at it. And that helped with that confidence too, where I I knew I did well and and I just what, what came first for you? Was it the doing well with it initially and then just believing yourself in yourself that you could continue to do well? Or was it that you, that you just kind of told yourself, this is what I'm going to do? I think if you remember. it was because it came easy for mm -hmm. me. Um, the, the fast responses and, and the switching of gears of, you know, going back and forth and, and it was and then on top of that yeah I'm seeing people yeah I don't really like them but I liked interacting with them <laughs> and, and I mean but no, I, I, always think that, I, I always love that idea that you know it's like this job would be great if it weren't for the customers yeah. when you're in like retail or customer service exactly it's, <laughs> it's, it's sad but it's so true but I mean I think it was the it was that I I saw that I was I was good at it. And then that helped that confidence. And then that role came in after, I think. Okay. So, Precious, you've been through a lot. I think that you are a person who probably would say that you maybe have, have a lot of grit, have persevered through a lot of, of challenging experiences. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been a journey. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for, for a lot of us, it, it has been a journey. Um, now, I know one of the things that, that we have in common is music. Yes. So I do want to talk to you about that. Um, I am trying to monitor the time and I'm really trying to not go and have this episode be an hour long. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, we're going to take a really quick break. And then when All we right. come back, we are going to talk to you about your, um, you as a musician and kind of what you're doing <laughs> right now and, and some of that story. So we'll be right back. So over the past few weeks, You've heard clips of a conversation that I had with Carolyn, who is one of uh, our, our listeners, um, and she sent me a, a, a PowerPoint presentation of her, her, she called it her master list, um, and the subtitle is, as close as you're going to get uh, to getting this audible obsessed executive function challenge listener to put her favorite audio to pick her favorite audiobook. So as she says, naturally, these are in no particular order. So Carolyn, I have this in my inbox key and I kept thinking that all right, I'll, I'll look at it soon. I'll look at it soon. And I just opened it and oh my gosh, this is awesome. And so I'm, I'm scrolling through 
Uh, it looks like there's like links to samples of each thing, uh, each book that you listed with the image, um, the narrator. Uh, oh, this is a great book, The Journal of Best Practices uh, by David Finch. Great, great book. Um, that one's a, about a, it's a memoir of a marriage of, of Asperger's syndrome and one man's quest to be a better husband. Such a good book. That guy actually lives near me. Um, how in the plex, how Google thinks. I'm just scrolling through, reading, uh, giving a few of them. Um, so cool, Carolyn, this is awesome. So if you want to see what I'm scrolling through right now and get a free audiobook download, go to erictivers.com slash audible. Now I need to write that down so I make that link happen. I think there's more than 20 here. Wow. And if you already know what you want, just go to audibletrial.com slash ADHD rewired. This is so cool. How Starbucks saved my life. A son's privilege, a son of privilege learns to live life like everyone else. This is so cool. Go check it out. Audibletrial.com slash ADHD rewired or ericsabers.com slash audible. Sometimes people have given me gifts of maybe a year of, of books, which is a certain number of tokens, like uh, 12 or 24. Uh -huh. um, but here's another thing is I discovered three days ago this thing called Kindle Unlimited on Amazon. And they have certain um, Kindle books that you can read with your monthly membership fee. But there's over 2,500 books that have the audio component to it, which is their whisper sync thing. Yeah, what t what is that? I, I always see that. I'm like, that sounds interesting. Is that mean so, like, is that whisper mean, sync someone, is, someone's whispering the book to you while you're listening to it? And this is what it sounds like. I know. Like, who would want that? <laughs> what that does is it syncs between your Kindle. So if you're reading it, it knows what page you're on if you're reading it in your Kindle. And now let's say you can't read it anymore, but you throw your headphones on. If you jump over to Amazon, when you play, it's going to start at the same page where you left off. Whoa. That's the sync. The whispering part is just creepy. Does it actually whisper? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's a no. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I do know that. It's the regular it's the regular audible thing. So I discovered a few days ago, I'm down to one credit and it's like, oh gosh, do I bite the bullet for another couple hundred bucks and get twenty four more credits? And then I discovered this thing for sign up for Kindle Unlimited for nothing for the first thirty days. But now I'm gonna obviously um re up for ten dollars a month. And I've already listened to, I'll tell you, since January 1st, I've listened to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 books. You know, I, I think I just thought of a way that you can um, spread your, your budget a little, little better. Instead of speeding up it, slow, slow the books down. Make them last longer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Precious, we are back. <laughs> it's really funny because I think I forgot to, to uh, tell you that when I tell you during the interview that we're going to be right back, that actually takes two seconds because I, you know, I just put an audio marker and then that gets added in later on. So I think you probably like, oh, I feel like it's reversed for a few minutes and then, like, wait, we're back? What? That was two oh, seconds. I <laughs> and I usually tell people that and I think I forgot that. Um, That's all right. It's okay. <laughs> okay, so we um, we were just talking about you. You shared it with us that um, you're you're a mom. You have a, a son who's nine years old. You um, had been in and out of some relationships when you were very young. Mm -hmm. um, you were a waitress, and now you are back at school. I am. I um, I decided to go back to school after a, a year long in banking and. It was that ideal nine to five. It was perfect, but everyone was so unhappy, and I didn't want to continue in that field. So I went in, back. In which in the dental hygiene? In banking. In what making? Banking. Banking. Okay. Bank teller. 
A bank. Okay. Okay. I, I thought you said like inmate making. I'm like, no, I don't think that's what she said. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Glad we clarified that. <laughs> <laughs> and and so I went back to continue the dental hygiene track. Mm-hmm. And the more I... If you're really good at dental hygiene, do you get a plaque? Uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 and uh, but, but yeah, I, again, it was the kind of how it would be practical. Mm-hmm. And, um, but it wasn't after a while taking the classes, I loved being in school, but then thinking about doing it day in and day out. And, and I realized that in probably good five, probably maybe even shorter, I would be back in school again for some other idea. Cause I'm, I'm during this time, I'm looking at all these different fields. I guess I could go for this or that. And I just couldn't commit. I'm so indecisive. I've always been indecisive. And so January, I found a free piano on Craigslist. I had, I had played piano growing up and, and another thing where it came easily and, um, until I became a little bit more intermediate and practicing just seemed pointless to me. (laughs) It seemed pointless, you said? Yeah. Yes, I mean, it just, I couldn't understand. Why would I practice this thing? Yeah, I mean, because it, it came easily. And mm. then as they got harder, I wouldn't put in the amount of time that was needed. Mm-hmm. Or I would be doing five things at the same time while practicing. And um, so I I squeezed in this piano. I'm teaching my friend. She had been dying to learn the piano. and And it had come back for me. You know, I still remember the notes and, and the play, and I had missed it. It was funny. I moved out when I was 16, and I had been forced to play piano at that point where it was just a grueling task, and I didn't care for it. But the second I moved out and I didn't have that piano there anymore, it was the first thing I missed. And so I was so happy to have it back. And so I'm teaching my friend, and she says, why don't you do this? You know, they, you could teach people and, and charge for lessons. And I thought, well, I'm not confident enough in my advanced abilities to help a student from beginners through. I mean, I could teach you the, the basics in the beginning, but I wanted to be able to do the with the students and, and mentor and help and tutor. And so I just kind of threw that idea away. And the more I thought about it, the, the more it just made sense. And so I, I looked online at the local university at their music program. And it turns out they have quite a um, arts program there. And, um, and which school is this at? This is VCU. Okay. That's Virginia. Community. Uh, okay. Vir- Virginia Commonwealth University. Okay. <laughs> and, um, so yes, VCU in Richmond, and they about to be the number one public uh, college in the arts, and so it was just it was just so ironic that this university is twenty minutes away. And so I, I go and talk with the director of the keyboarding department, the piano, mm-hmm. and and I tell her a little bit about myself, and she says you know, show me what you got. And, and I, and I played a piece for her and she gave me some, some other pieces to work on and that auditions are, are in six weeks, try to get this memorized and work on it. And, um, so long story short, in that sense, I auditioned on the whim and, and I, I made it and I was so excited. And, um, to think about an, an occupation that you can enjoy. I'd always, I love teaching. I just, I enjoy bringing it down to someone and, and helping someone get that light bulb to flash on. Mm-hmm. But I could never be a school teacher because of lesson plans. I can't plan and I can't organize. And, and so I just, that just sounded, there are so many negatives that would counteract the teaching part. Mm-hmm. Then teaching music, I thought, well, maybe I could make that work. 
And ideally, I would love to to be a a studio and privately teach. Now, but never... at, at this point, Precious, when you were you're in school, were uh-huh. you diagnosed yet with ADHD? Not yet. Okay. Okay. No. And um, so, but I didn't want to be a business owner because that sounds like something I can't do. So all these ideas, you know, because I'm disorganized, I can't get anything accomplished. But I'm so excited. I'm back in school for a music school. It's the arts. I was supposed to go there when I was younger before I moved out. And and it was like my, my path had come full circle. And what's even more important is I had that little boy. And he's the one who kept me grounded. And I know for a fact, if I went to university before I had him, it would have been a mess. It, I wouldn't have finished as it was. Yeah. And so it's, ama- it's amazing how kids change everything. Oh, yes. I mean, yeah, he just, he keeps me going and I had reason and, and, and it was for myself, but for him too, you know? And so here I was in school first month. I'm I was the first week felt like it was six weeks long. It was the longest week of my life. And what what made it so long? It was, I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't realize how intense the program is. Um, It's a lot of information. And it's a lot of like reading or. um, It was just a lot of, I mean, concepts. I did have one class where I had to read a lot. And um, I thankfully, I had all my general stuff, mm-hmm. got English and math stuff out of the way. And all those things that we'll never have to use in our life. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I was able to focus on the music and um, the theory, the, the written part of music on the staff and, and why it makes the sound it does. That is so in depth. And there's so many levels and layers. And as you advance to the next part, it's like math, where in order to do algebra, you need to know how to add. Right. Right. And the way I take tests and the way I I did well in in previous school classes is I memorize short term, I spit it back out for the test, and then it's gone. And (sighs) so this was becoming... But are you saying that cramming doesn't work? Right. I know. Go figure. And that was the, that was, it was awful. I mean, and, and I had been diagnosed with depression a few years back when I was leaving one of those fun relationships and, and was treated for that. So I was seeing a doctor to, to manage the um, antidepressant that I was on. Mm -hmm. And because that had, it had popped this bubble that I had always been in and I had always felt like I couldn't exactly get the words from my mind to my mouth out unless I was writing it down or mm-hmm. I wrote letters a lot if I was upset or that kind of thing. But suddenly I was able to communicate better. And so this was from, with the antidepressants. It was, interestingly enough. Okay. And um, so I I was talking with her and I thought, you know, I'm, I'm not really depressed but I think my medication is to increase. And she's like, well, what's going on? I go, well, I mean, so I had, I had been in school for, for over a year, but this was just a whole different level of expectation. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I've always been a procrastinator. I'd always justify that that's when I do my best work. So, so that's just how I learned to do everything. And it worked and I would get good grades. So I changed the, the system. But it wasn't working anymore. I would have, there are these tests that we have to do. And, and one hand is doing one thing and the other hand is doing nothing. We're patting and talking at the same time. Mm-hmm. And so we're trying to, to get all this down. And, and I mean, it's, and again, it's that layered system where you got to learn step one and remember it to get to step two and three. And I would have weeks to prepare for this test. And no matter what I did, I would still find myself the night before just trying to cram it in and it just Mm -hmm. was not working. And similar pattern to all the other years that I've been in school where I do really, really well in the beginning. I have my planner. I'm all organized. Yep, that's, that's how we start off all then, like gung ho. And then yeah, we, yep. this intention and then halfway through, it's just, oh, you know, I'm writing and 
my, my dividers mean nothing anymore because I have something for every subject and every all through my binder. And, and before in high school and, and the first couple of years of college where my A's would just kind of be like a lower A or maybe a high B, I was going from A to a very solid B and then wondering if I'm even going to continue because I was going completely insane. I just, it was so much stress. And then in the meantime, you know, I have to feed my kid and keep him alive. And, and I'm just, I don't know. And and there just wasn't enough hours in the day, but then I would, I had all this stuff to do and I would just be doing nothing. I would, I would take a nap. Yeah. I, I had to take a nap every single day or I just couldn't function or I was, on Facebook for a ridiculous amount of time. And I, and I know it's there and I have that cloud, but I just couldn't get myself to do it or I would couldn't activate. Do else. Yeah. And so she talks to me and she says, um, have you ever been, no, she is, I, oh, I'm sorry. My, uh, my doctor, the psychiatrist okay. that I was seeing. Um, and I'm, talking about the depression. She asked me if I'd ever been diagnosed with ADHD and I laugh. And I said, well, you know, in second grade, they, they brought it up. Um, but it's because I was bored and, and they put me in the gifted program instead. And they said I was hyperactive, not mm-hmm. ADHD. She goes, well, hyperactivity is ADHD. And I go, well, I, I wasn't ever treated for it. And I can focus. I, I graduated high school with an unweighted 3.98. Yeah, you know, I've, I've done fine. You know, I don't. Okay. So we, we went to um, the next appointment and, and by that point I said, so how would I go about ruling out ADHD? And I went and, um, I went to, to go see a, a specialist mm-hmm. an ADHD clinic, but in the meantime, I had been reading about it and go figure there's, there's different types and, and it's more than just. You know, the bouncing third grader that won't sit down and um, learning about the neurotransmitters and, and how the balance is. And then I come across this article that was describing primarily inattentive mm-hmm. ADHD. And I, and they wrote my life and I was just floored. Is it one of those moments that like there's the before you had that information part of your life and then the after? Yes. Like, yeah. And I, I'm seeing things so differently. I go, oh my gosh. And, and uh, so I saw the procrastination as something different. Yeah. I go figure procrastinating is a symptom. Yeah. I, you know, I, that just blew my mind. And I was able to get a little bit more initiative over things. I noticed a couple of days cause I was seeing it differently, but it still wasn't at the peak. And so then I, I'm just curious about treatment and, and the medication. And I had always been such a cynic about this whole world with the the medication and the ADHD and the conspiracy and it's made up by the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, right. And and yeah, you know, it's, it's it's all just a yeah, a boy. So but yeah, you know, I figured you know, I'd try precious, to see it. if you if you if you wrote down you know the things you need to do on a list, you wouldn't have these problems. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or I mean and that was the other thing too. So I have my my piano teacher Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm a piano student and, and I was doing pretty good in the beginning of the semester. And then, yeah, I, I, the way I practiced was I would go in, I'd go, okay, I got to practice. I should make dinner. I start water boiling. And I remember I had to do something. I see mail I have to do. And then the water's boiling over and I go, oh my gosh, I'm still practicing. And that was how I practiced. And it wasn't. So you were actually sitting in front of the piano practicing. Oh, that's not practicing. <laughs> and they're telling me I have to practice three hours a day. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't think I even do 40 minutes at, at the most. I mean, that's that's not a good day. You know, when <laughs> when I when I was uh, when I was very young, because I've I played piano since I could probably reach the keys. Right. Yes. And um, 
you know, so my my parents didn't take lessons, but I never really like learned like I never really learned how to read the music. I faked it the whole time, like <laughs> like the, so the teacher would play it like one time, and I I just I had an ear a really good ear for it. So yeah. my I would play the piano a lot, but like so I put the sheet music up that I was supposed to be learning, but then I would go play, play Nintendo, and then I would get bored of playing Nintendo, so then I would figure out the theme songs to the games that I was playing. Uh -huh. That was how I learned to play piano. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and my teacher is saying, you're not practicing. And I go, Oh no, I, me I, I had it memorized. I swear. She goes, no, I think you're, you, you memorize it, you play it once and then you think you have it. That's there's, there's a whole different level of, of memorizing and, and really understanding and grasping the music. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll try it. And again, the weeks go by and I just, I just couldn't get it. I'm working on these pieces for months at this point. And now is this the, the, you're working on these pieces for months as in you're thinking about it while over boiling your water and, um, um yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if we're being and really then, honest here, you were thinking about it for months. I was thinking so you... <laughs> of working on it, you know, and, and maybe, maybe 20 minutes of actually being on the piano. Then my friend who's telling me, you know, they say that that vis visualization can be just as productive as being thing on the piano and practicing with the, the muscle memory. Yes. And I say, like, okay, you know, I can, I could do that. But then I, I get to look at it and it's just not happening. So I'm. That requires I'm, intense focus to really right, vi visualize yes, I, that way. And I'm not like that. This is just all natural. And, and, and I just <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't get it. And then I'm, I'm thinking about this ADHD and, and I'm going through this whole complex. I mean, this was just last October, mm -hmm. last October, 2014. And, um, you know, I, I'm wondering, what does this mean? All these, all these symptoms, where does that stop and where do I begin? And so I'm having this identity crisis on top of all this. <laughs> and, and then I'm thinking, okay, well, let's see if the meds work. It may be, if this is the problem, then there's a solution. And I know there's the, the natural ways to, to work it out and diet and all these other things and exercise and habits. But, um, Oh, when you say natural ways, cause I need to kind of, Oh, um, Oh, I mean, some of cutting out dyes and stuff. I mean, which they actually did when I was younger. Mm -hmm. it, didn't, it didn't affect anything. So, I, so I, just, I just want to make a, a comment, you know, because I don't, I don't talk so much about the details of the research, but I try to make sure that on the show right. that, that, you know, the evidence-based information is at least being talked about and things that are, um, you know, either alternative or not proven are at least mm -hmm. discussed as such. And so the dyes are not proven. It's not proven. I mean, because here's the thing, on an intuitive level, it makes sense if you can't uh, pronounce the ingredient that is probably not good for us. Right. But does that cause the ADHD? Does it, does it increase the, the, the symptoms of it or exacerbate it? There is very little research that shows it. Same thing with like, like gluten sensitivities. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, because the other half of my practice is autism. And so that's the, uh, the gluten-free, casein-free kind of stuff is very prevalent in the autism community. And so what, what I say to that, and when I talk to, to clients that are asking about this, is that, you know, the research does not support the idea that, that gluten is, is um, taking right. gluten out of the diet is going to help. Clinically, I've seen it work miracles in two families that I've worked with. So it's, you know, just because the research doesn't show it doesn't mean it's right. not. Yes. But I think it's really important to really begin with what do we know? Right. Yeah. So, okay. No, what? definitely. And and so I was excited. I guess so this is this is the problem, then then there's a solution, there's treatment. And um and and so during the, the testing, I had three one hour tests, but I, I appointments that I, I went to go to and I would joke that I guess missing one of them is part of the diagnosis process. It, and, it all three appointments, <laughs> that's a that's an immediate rule out for diagnosis. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> so, early and, for all of them. And I and I went in and the counselor I met with was so sweet and and she shared that she has ADHD. And and I discussed some of my disbelief on it and talked about some other things. And she gets out, oh, yeah, as ADHD. And I was just, you know, 
wow, I'm reading more and, and all these articles and and the science behind it, mm -hmm. where where it's the yeah you know, in the brain, it's a neurological condition. Yes. And um, so I I came to terms with it, where that these me being late is not my personality. Yeah. Me not wanting to do an assignment or not wanting to clean or or not be I, I wasn't able to and um because I I didn't know how to get that done mm -hmm. and then um so we went through all the assessments and diagnosis positive and attentive and um primarily inattentive go back to the doctor and and we start on on medication to treat the ADHD I um I wait because there's an insurance uh, process. So mm -hmm. I'm waiting a week. Get to jump through some hoops. Yes. And so in that time, I had a recital for piano. And I wasn't ready. And I had, but the week before, kept, okay, I am going to put in the time. And I'm going to do this the way you're supposed to do. And we're going to see this work. And and I did. I, I wasn't boiling water. <laughs> I would be there playing and practicing and over and over. And... I just couldn't get it for the life of me. And, and I go in to so before really my recital. Were in the time. I was, and, and I had never done that before. So I could kind of say, you're right. You know, to my teacher, ah, I'm really not disciplined. <laughs> and, and so, but then here I was, I was, I was going to do it and, and it wasn't working. I go to my lesson and she says, you haven't been practicing still. Mm, that's must be so I discouraging. Just, I want to cry now thinking of it. Yeah, exactly. I was just discouraged. I just, said no i i am and she even talked with me about changing instruments the voice and if i didn't know that this diagnosis and treatment was in play i would have dropped out so this is all way. happening at the same time oh yes so fast forward a little bit right um i start treatment um the i the prescription came in i was excited a little nervous i take it yeah tell us about that first kind of I, day yes i i Went, waited an hour. I took the dog for a walk and I come back and I go to play the piano. And um, I, had, I played through it. I had two pieces memorized in 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. It was a light switch and I just had never experienced that. The, the counselor had asked me, what do you think you're going to do when um, when when you do start treatment, what do you want to see change? I go, I, I can't even imagine. I can't fathom life not being the way it is right now. So I can't really answer that. And it was just this whole new world. And and instead of trying to clean the whole house at the same time, I was able to take suction and actually do it. And it looked like I was doing something instead of doing 50,000 things and it still looked the same <laughs> or cleaning the drawer that nobody looks in. Mm -hmm. And um, We all have one of those drawers, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was a, a world changer. I had just so much, I words just doesn't even describe between night and day. You, you So you told me when we first talked about a, uh, uh, tell me you went shortly after you started treatment and you were uh -huh. with your piano teacher and you took your medication a little bit too early. Yeah. You started yeah. your lesson. Great. And then what happened? Right. And then about halfway through, it was like a car running out of gas where I would just stutter and I would, I would start to, to do it. And then it just wasn't there anymore. It was gone. And I was trying to to explain it to my teacher. She understands a little bit more now this year. You said that she was kind of a skeptic. Oh, she's she was very much a skeptic. She goes, eh, you know, we'll see if the medication helps. But you know, it's just you don't know how you're not disciplined. You don't know how to do. It. And I go, I, I mean, I, I can see that argument in this point. But no, no, I took a test, and it says it's an objective test on the computer and everything. It's not subjective, where it's opinions or opinions mm -hmm. and. I, it is, it exists. People who don't have this were able to do this test well. Mm -hmm. And so I. 
And it's, you know, those computerized tests, which are objective measures, uh-huh. um, are, is not a test that, that says, yes, you do. It's, right. it's one piece of, of that diagnostic yes. process. So it's testing certain components of attention. We also have to think about our, our, our sensory channels because most mm-hmm. of them are using either visual or visual and auditory sensory channels. Right. Um, yeah. And some of I us process that. differently. So um, was it the quotient or the kind of, do you know what it was? No, the, the number one. Okay. All right. Which one it's is a that? boring test, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and and so um, I, I short circuit, and then because we were working hard on this one section, she goes, "Okay, from the beginning," and I just gone blank mm-hmm. blank page. It was it was still really discouraging. I was in tears. I was so sad, and um, because she still didn't believe me, <laughs> and. Um, so then we, we, I start getting the hang of it because I was on what's called the, the instant release. And, mm-hmm. you know, so there's a, a short lifespan time for yes. to be working. And so I, I get a system down and I'm, I'm practicing. I got to where I couldn't stop practicing. And I, I'm suddenly, I'm, I'm this type A person, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I just want to get things done and, and I have things to do and I'm doing them and, and I'm not just, in La La Land, and suddenly those those theory classes about the music and everything are just coming together, and I understand it on a whole different level. It was where I just kind of knew of it before, but I was just completely grasping it was all the connecting. whole concept exactly. And so, if, now this is about five weeks before the end of the semester, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm memorizing pieces. I, had to, I have to play and, and be judged by the faculty. And then I'm studying and cramming for finals. I learned all this stuff that I should have been learning this whole semester. And and I did it. I ended up getting a, a B in piano and the rest were A's. And it was just it was unbelievable. Thank you. And and this year, my um, my teacher, I already had were, let's see, it's the... 23rd we're about two and a half weeks into the semester no oh anyways school started on the 12th it's the 23rd I already have a piece memorized and 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 my teacher just said yeah you know that's that's an amazing achievement for you yeah it took me three months to get here last semester and it's just it's a whole different kind of world and it's not only just in in school and in music it's my whole life it's i'm able to cook in a in a kitchen and not completely freak out or burn the house but, down yes i mean i would <laughs> it was just it was such a mess it was organized chaos was my life mm-hmm. and and i'm learning and i see now too that that the medication is very much a tool it is not the fix all answer no cuz it's it's you know, I'm sure you relate with this. The medication helps the brain focus, but it doesn't teach you a thing. Right. And also all these other behaviors that I have seen now for coping mechanism in the past, I need to change those. And and so it's little steps and, and just learning more about it and being aware of my thoughts. The other day we were in a crowded museum and I was just suddenly upset and and short and i realized it wasn't that what my friend did upset me it was that there was 300 people around me and too much information going on around me and Mm -hmm. i was trying to read the little blurbs and i couldn't understand it and all this noise and so i was just overstimulated and overwhelmed and being able to have that diagnosis and knowing what adhd means Mm -hmm is I was able to unwind, take that step back and acknowledge what I'm feeling and why, Mm -hmm. and then approach and deal with it that way. I need to take a a breather. I'm going to go over here and sit. And now a big part of, of why I was excited to do this is that I told some of my closest friends about my diagnosis. So this Um, is like your coming out party. It is. I've, I've not... I mean, because there's there's that stigma, I think I was really kind of I'm self conscious about it mm-hmm. and nervous, and um, but I don't want to be because there's there's so much that is misunderstood by it mm-hmm. about it, and um, 
And also, I don't want other people to feel bad about it because it's it's not something that we've done that we should feel guilty about. Right. And um, it's just it just is. And you know, you learn steps to kind of work with it, and and you might take a step back. But then you take a few steps forward and you know, it's just this process. That and that's is, true no matter where you are in the process. Oh, yeah. I, you know, mean, I think exactly. that I'm, I'm probably case in point to that <laughs> from the last week or so. Oh, which was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and my, my friends at, at school, my classes, they, I told them about it because here I am a straight A student and I had to go in with accommodations with the school with mm-hmm. this disability now and, and, and they would laugh and it was, it, it was in, in light. It wasn't necessarily to be cruel, but I think it was because they just don't understand. Yeah. yeah. And because here I am, I don't, you have what, you know? And, um, so it's this whole other thing. And I, I found myself, you know, sending articles to all my friends and, and I'm in the music program. I'm in the arts and we're drawn to the arts that outside mm-hmm. thinking i realized that there's maybe a handful of people that do not have this is just normal it's, yes. yeah. I, well i wondered when i went to the music program i go i'm with my people like i just i just get them and and we're our tribe is just so important <laughs> No, it's, it really, and that's that's the whole thing about this this community that we, that we've been building around the podcast is just yeah. when you you know can relate with it's not just one or two and there's like over you know hundreds of people like that's why I love going to the ADHD conferences just like <laughs> I am with my people it's right. like I can be like walking around like a complete mess out of sorts and it's like it's fine it's like yeah. you know it's like people I get know. it. I, exactly. can, I can lose my, my my train of thought in the middle of a, of a presentation and, and very cool. Uh, you know, I'll actually one of the things that I've done before, and it totally works because it's all you know. I'm with my people. I'll be in like if I'll go off on a little tangent, I'll forget where I was, and I'll just ask the, the audience. I say, "What was I just right. talking about?" And they yeah. help me out, and we're all good. We get back and, on track. And there's no fear of judging because right. they understand. Yes, and that's what I mean. I love about the group too, online on Facebook because I don't have to edit i mean i will write books because i'm just screwing yes, on yes, all these will. thoughts <laughs> i do but normally I, I tend to skim I'm books edited. just so you know <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here, yeah, here's, here's yes. what I want to do because you right, know we, we could totally keep talking, but then yes. then there's going to be nobody right. that's still listening. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I you know we're going to do the abridged version of you know what time it's for, the random <laughs> question round. This okay. is the part of the show that has nothing to do with ADHD, which then paradoxically has everything to do with ADHD, and in a very ADHD type of fashion. I have not planned my questions, and I haven't planned my questions. <laughs> in the last like five or 10 episodes since I've started doing this random question around. So right. I don't know what made me think about it while we were talking, but I just had an idea of my first question. Now I usually ask the question, I'm going to now, an invention, something that will make something uh, uh, better, new. What, what's your invention? I've been, I've been trying to think of one because <laughs> I knew it was coming. I, um, I think that I would invent, um, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Next question. Let's get that way. We're short on time. <laughs> Next question. How long can you dunk an Oreo cookie in milk before it falls apart? About thirty seconds. I'd like you to go do that for thirty seconds. Dip an Oreo cookie. You're gonna have mush. <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer, Precious, is about 14 seconds. Um, but you got to be really careful because when you pull it out, you can't pull it out too quickly. Because then, then it falls. Uh huh, that's right. Yes. I just made the last part up. I actually had no idea. Um, <laughs> um, why is there no E sharp? <laughs> There can be. It's F. Then why is there no F flat? <laughs> there can be. 
Is he? You mean that? Why is, isn't there that black key in between? Yeah, and between B and C, you know that 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 semi, <laughs> you know, different now different instruments in different places do, do use like semitones, right? Yes, and um, in Indian music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's on, in their on an Indian piano, if there's such a thing, is do they? I'm looking at my keyboard right now. Do they? <laughs> do they have a an a um E sharp? They they get it through. I mean, most of theirs was a stringed instrument, mm-hmm. and so they they tune it and differently. It was actually really interesting. Yeah, they they have they have all these other notes and, and quarter tones, and and it sounds to us like a um, kind of tune, like a well, no, to us it sounds kind of like a a warm, wobble, like vibrato, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and and it's actual notes for them. I mean, mm-hmm. and then then this whole I had this whole semester on. And, you know, well, what makes it music versus noise? <laughs> That's the whole other chapter. Well, I think that there's a lot of parents who think that their kids' music is noise and their music is, <laughs> you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that will be a, a discussion for probably the end of time. <laughs> <laughs> Because when I turn on the radio, most of the stuff that's on the radio is noise to me. It's like that's not music. Like that's, right. that's someone put a couple buttons into the computer, they played a loop, and uh, it's I like, understand. where's the melody? Where's the tone? And it's right. like, so yes. that's it's that's me and my opinionated. Aren't, aren't musicians <laughs> such a so opinionated when it comes to like what's music? <laughs> so, yeah, this is the best kind of music, and what you listen right. to. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> So, um, I understand. I've looked into the future, and I've seen that you uh, came out with an opus, and oh. uh, you, you wrote your whole opus, and it's uh, um, and it has a theme to it. What's the name of your opus? It would be the the. I have words, but they're just not coming up. Um, it would be the 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 stream in the wooded. Secret place? What's it? What's another word for secret? Um, um, hidden? No. Um, I need my thesaurus. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but yes. Another word for secret. <laughs> um, <laughs> hidden. Um, uh, confidential. Um, it would be. This is where it'd be great if you had yeah. audience participation. <laughs> <laughs> right. It would be. It would be the stream. And it, through the wayward woods. Okay. And it. what was really special about this this opus was the orchestration. Tell us who who was in this piece that made it so special and why it was why it was featured on like every magazine. Other than me. Yeah. You, 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 well, clearly you were on the front, but behind you. <laughs> I would have. Um, it would be a it would be uh, dueling pianos Ooh. set with the orchestra a full orchestra strings orchestra and so it would it would have all these different themes and layered four parts you know the orchestra pieces like this but then you have to think of the piano which can do so many other voices and um and, have, and then, have you then ever the heard background, of... no, no, the background is going to have like the, the screen thing. And then so there's ambiance and you're constantly in the dark and, and, and strobe lights come down and in time with the music, light show. So that my was... question was. Um... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Precious, I'm sweating to, to ADD land there for a moment. Um, so it's it's funny. I don't usually use ADD even when, they, when I use that expression. And I just said, I don't know why. Huh. Um, I mean, I was having a conversation, I think, with someone else today about that. Uh, the now I don't remember what I was going to say. So that's probably a good place to stop. Um, <laughs> right. The unanswered question. Yes. Yes. The... the, the... <laughs> So, you know, this show really is about personal stories, about productivity, about strategies, and it's about having a little bit of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> when you, when you mentioned dueling pianos, I had the thought of why didn't we actually arrange for that? Cause I have a keyboard in my office. I mean, it's a, like a 63 key keyboard. Yeah. Do you have a key, you have a piano at your house? Yes. We I, should I do, do dueling pianos here. <laughs> that 
Yeah, featured episode. Well, maybe um, we'll <laughs> connect before this episode comes out and we'll, we'll do something. Because um, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that will be for the uh, the extra, the bonus footage. Um, right. That you got to go to the website for. <laughs> Precious, any final words before we say goodbye? Um, no, I guess I just uh, appreciate anyone who took the time to listen and um i think just the um, important part that i just really want to share is that if you do have an inkling and think that um it might be helpful for you to look into adhd and and it might be affecting you is to not there there are others <laughs> you know you're not alone it's very isolating initially especially when um and everyone that you do know in person doesn't believe in it. Yeah. And it's, it's very much real and it's not imagination and I can't just try harder. It's something that's affected me my whole life. And I'm, and I'm so thankful now that I have, I have the answer to that problem so that I know how to assess it and, and how to manage it. And so, I mean, it's just the beginning. I'm, I'm excited plans have changed now that I know that I can do what I thought before I wasn't able to do. Well, Precious, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. I really yeah, appreciate it. You, you've been a very valued member to our, uh, our online community. Um, so you can, you know, talk to Precious in the, in the ADHD yeah. rewired okay. community. And there's always, as always, there are full show notes and of, of uh, an outline of the show that, um, that Richard, who is my man, who does my, all my editing of this podcast exactly. and Richard, keep this in. Cause I just want to give you a shout out. So, um, the outline not done by me, um, it, it will be listened to. And then, uh, he does all the notes. So we gotta, you know, focus on what we're good at and outsource the rest. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wise words. All right. Well, we will be in touch. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Well, ADHD Rewired Community, thank you for listening to another episode of ADHD Rewired. I promised you in the beginning that I would do a short outro, and I intend on sticking to that. Thank you for listening. If you've been listening for a while or you are new to this podcast, please go and leave a review on iTunes. We just hit 192 reviews on iTunes, and I cannot thank you enough. We are we are nearing the 100,000 download mark. We will probably hit that in the next month or so. So, guys, thank you. This has been quite a, a ride, and I look forward to bringing you the next 50 episodes, because next month is 50. So thank you for listening. Come and join the community on Facebook. Just search us in groups, the Rewired Community. And that's all I got. I have more, but I'm going to save it for next time. See you then.